Welcome, everyone. Today we have Eitan Regev from the Taub Center for Social Policy Studies in Israel, who's going to be presenting a review of economic and employment data of the Haredi community in Israel. This presentation is in preparation for the JFN Accelerate convening on December 2nd in New York. Eitan, thank you for taking the time. Um, we appreciate you doing this presentation, and I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Ruti. Uh, hello, everyone. Very happy to be speaking to you. Uh, I'm Ethan Regev. I'm an in-house researcher at the Top Center for the past four and a half years and a PhD candidate at the Hebrew University uh, in the Department of Economics. And um, I will be showing you today uh, some of the materials of my uh, research from the past few years about the economy uh, of the Haredi sector and the relationship between education and employment. I'd like to start with a few fast facts uh, to give some background about uh, the Haredi population in Israel. So the Haredi population in Israel is approximately one million persons, which accounts for about 12.5% of total population. Of those, 600,000 persons are under the age of 20 and half a million are under the age of 15. <clears throat> When the State of Israel was founded, Haredim only accounted for 1% of the total population. However, high fertility rates have helped the Haredim population double itself every 15 years on average. The average fertility rate in Haredim families during the last decade stood at 7.5 children per family and it has recently declined to 6.5 children. So this, this was just a general background. Now I would like to delve in a bit deeper into trends, recent trends, in education and employment within the Haredi sector and their influence on the Haredi economy. And I'd like to start with the story of employment and to show you the employment rates of Haredim and non-Haredim in Israel in recent decades. So starting in 1979 and ending in 2011, uh, when we look at non-Haredi Jews with 16 years of education or more people with, with an academic degree, we can see that their employment rates were high and remained high above 90%, and the same is true for Arab Israelis with the same kind of education. But when we look at <clears throat> Israeli Jews, with non haredi Jews with only zero to four years of education, then we can see that despite that employment rates were quite high back in the 70s, there was a, a very steep decline, and today less than 50% are employed. And the same is true for Arab Israelis. What about Haredim? Well, very similar trend, and this is actually true for Haredim with all levels of education. Uh, used to be very high employment rates back in the late 70s, and uh, there was a steep decline. And this hinted to us that there was a relationship to the type of education Haredim men were receiving. And this leads us to the next slide, to the comparison between Haredi men, the employment rates of Haredi men without an academic degree and with an academic degree. So <clears throat> as you can see, Haredi men with an academic degree, only about a third of them are employed uh, without an academic degree. But with an academic degree, it rises to 71%. Haredi women who are considered to be uh, nowadays the main breadwinners in most Haredi households, only about 50% of those without an academic degree are employed, but with an academic degree, it rises to 76%. Uh, what about wages? When we look at the wages of Haredi, of Haredi women without an academic degree employed full-time, then we can see that they only earn about 5,200 shekels a month, but with an academic degree, it's 80% higher. For Haredi men with no academic degree, they make about 7,600 shekels a month, but with an academic degree, again, 80% higher. And as you can see, uh, when Haredi men are employed, they, they earn an average significantly more than Haredi women. Um, when we combine these two factors together, employment and wages, then we can see the effect of uh, formal education on the average income of a Haredi household. Um, so this is the income of the average Haredi household where neither spouse has an academic degree. These households account for 80% of all Haredi households, and about a third of the income comes from the husband's income, 
about third from the wife's income and another third from national insurance benefits and other sources like donations. And as you can see, these households where neither spouse have an academic degree only make about 7,400 shekels on average. When only the wife has an academic degree, it's significantly higher, 12,000 shekels. And when only the husband has an academic degree, it's about 14,000 shekels because as you've seen before, when the men do work, they earn more than the women. And when both spouses have an academic degree, it's much higher, about 19,000 shekels a month. Uh, but unfortunately, these, only, these households only account for 5%, 5 of all uh, Haredi households in Israel. So we've seen the importance of an academic degree to Haredi employment and wages and to the well-being of the average Haredi household in Israel. So let's see what percentage of Israelis, of Haredi Israelis and of Israeli, Israelis of other sectors have an academic degree. And I'd like to divide it to two age groups, the older age groups, ages 45 to 64, and the younger age group, ages 25 and 44. And let's first look at non haredi Jews of the older age group. As you can see, about 31% of, of the older men and the older women uh, of non haredi Jews have an academic degree. But when we look at the younger generation, then we see that there has been a dramatic rise, especially for the women. It's risen for 39%, and they have now much higher, uh, uh, higher education rate uh, compared to non haredi Jewish men. What about Christian Arab Israelis? Where for the older generation, it's much lower compared to the non haredi Jews, but major improvement for the younger generation, especially for the women, were su surpassing even the uh, academic degree rates of non haredi Jewish men. For Muslim and Druze, uh, for the older generation, it's much lower, especially for the women. It's only about uh, 3%. But when we look at the, older, at the younger generation, a major improvement uh, for the women. It's about four times higher. Still a long way to go, but the trend is very positive. And as a whole, we see that in all sectors, the younger generation is more uh, educated than the older generation. What about the Haredi sector? Well, for the older generation, it's 15% for the men and 7.5% for the women. But for the younger generation, it's actually lower and contradiction to the trend in all other sectors, meaning basically that um, the Haredi children today are actually less educated, less formally educated than their parents' generation. Now, some people would argue this is due to the fact that many Haredim uh, have only become Haredim at a later age and have acquired uh, the academic degree um, earlier in life, and therefore we don't see the data for the young people only for the older generation. So we decided to put this argument to the test by comparing the same age group over time, Haredim men ages 35 to 54, and look at what was their highest form of certificate uh, in each of these years. So back in 2002, about a quarter of all Haredi men those ages had only secondary education, meaning high school education without a matriculation diploma. And about a third had only primary education or less. In the last decade, the share of those with high school education or less has declined to about 16%. And the share of those with uh, primary education or less has risen to about 50%, about half, sorry, 47%. And there wasn't much change in the other settings. So basically what we're seeing here is that about two to three decades ago, Haredi parents gradually stopped sending their kids to high school and began sending them to small yeshivas instead, where none of the formal materials, none of the formal curriculum is being taught. And we can see this uh, trend of change when we look at the share of Haredim that have ever attended a great yeshiva by age cohort, and beginning with the older age cohort, ages 75 and above, we can see that about 55% of that age group uh, of Haredim uh, in that age group have ever attended a great yeshiva. But when we look at the younger age group, we see a dramatic rise in the share of attendance in a great yeshiva, and for the younger generation, it's above 90%. 
Um, how is this affecting the employment rates of Haredi men compared to other sectors? So I'd like to share the different sectors, employment rates by age group, starting with non-Haredi Jewish men. And as you can see, they start off pretty early in their 20s, and they reach quite high front rates of 80%, with, which they maintain for about three decades. Uh, similar story for Christian Arab Israelis, and then for Muslims and Jews, it declines a bit earlier because they tend to work at more physically demanding uh, type of jobs, which, they, which is harder to maintain at older ages. But the trend is quite similar for these three sectors, and it is very different from that of Haredi men, which only attain their highest uh, employment rates at their 50s, and even then it's quite low, only about 50%. And this is mostly due to the uh, long years spent in uh, great yeshivas before entering the labor market. Uh, where are Haredi men and women employed? Well, mostly in education, mostly in the field of education. Only about 4% of non-Haredi Jewish men are employed in education, but for Haredi men, it's five times higher. For Haredi women, compared to, uh, to non-Haredi women, 34% um, of the Haredi uh, women are employed in the field of education compared to only 17% of non-Haredi Jewish women. Um, we've seen the importance of an academic degree, so I'd like to show you recent trend, what's happening in recent years, because we're all hearing that uh, there's been a return of uh, Haredi uh, population to academic uh, degree studies, to academic studies, so let's see if it's actually succeeding. For the men, and this is from the social survey, so the data is quite uh, volatile, but as you can see, we're not uh, really seeing a trend of improvement. But for the women, it is rising, and it's risen from about 50% to about 20%. And the reason why uh, the women are succeeding and the men aren't succeeding uh, as much in returning to academic studies is because the women are uh, receiving uh, high school education while the men are only uh, receiving uh, formal education at the elementary level and later on continuing to uh, small yeshivas. And this is making the difference between the success rates of the men and the women. So how is all of this affecting the economic situation of Haredi households? To understand this issue, we need to look actually at the housing market in Israel. And for comparison's sake, I would like to show you what happened to house prices uh, bought by non haredi Jews in the last decade. Uh, their uh, house prices have risen by 34% in real terms after deducting inflation. And uh, the average mortgage payments, monthly mortgage payments, have risen by a similar manner by about 31%. What about the house prices uh, of houses brought, uh, bought by Haredim in the last decade? Well, their prices have only risen by about 6%, uh, and this is mainly due to the fact that um, Haredim uh, in the last decade have been in large numbers buying houses in Judea and Samaria uh, due to uh, higher affordability. But despite buying almost the same price house as a decade ago, are now paying mortgage payments that are 72% higher uh, than they used to a decade ago for the same price houses, and this basically means that they have much less money today for the down payment, and they are forced to take much higher loans. And this, for us, is the strongest indication that we could find uh, for the fact that um, the economic situation of uh, many Haredi families today uh, in Israel has deteriorated, and this is mostly due to uh, uh, the difficulties that they find in uh, finding employment today and due to the uh, lack of formal education, mostly for the men. And uh, in order to reverse this process, uh, they uh, need to receive uh, uh, more uh, better tools and proper uh, formal education in order to, to be able to reintegrate into the Israeli labor market and uh, uh, make a better living to uh, solve these issues. 
So thank you very much for uh, your attention. I was very happy to be here. And uh, goodbye. Thank you, Eitan. We appreciate it. And everyone, we welcome. We look forward to seeing you at the Accelerate Conference on December 2nd. Thank you. Thank you.